This is Finch, and he's a Tarsier. I know, he looks like someone's just pointed their headlights at him in the middle of the night. But the size of his eyes was an evolutionary adaptation that allowed him to see better in the dark. His eyeballs are as big as his brain. Tarsiers have the biggest eye-to-head size ratio out of all mammals. Now, it's a known fact that humans and animals don't see the world in the same way. But how about we dive into how some creatures experience our reality? To start out with Finch, well, he rocks at night vision. While humans experience the nighttime in a scale of gray colors, Tarsiers can only see monochromatically. But the orbs in their eyes allow them to gather every single bit of light available in an environment. This means that they can hunt insects and tiny birds with a bizarre precision, even if it's pitch black outside. They can't move their eyeballs, though. So if they see something to their left or right, they have to turn their entire heads. FYI, there is actually a night vision goggle named Tarsier that allows humans to experience darkness much like these animals do. In case you're wondering, this is what a forest would look like to a Tarsier. And speaking of seeing in the dark, these pals are called Arctic Reindeer. They developed an interesting feat that helps them see in dim light. The back of their eyes changes color according to the season. In the summertime, the back of their eyes is gold and in wintertime, it's blue. You see, winter light is at least 100,000 times fainter than summer light. This adaptation helps reindeer find food and protect themselves from predators during the three months of harsh winter. You can also find this type of adaptation in other nocturnal animals, such as our beloved cats. Picture it like a mirror sitting behind the retina. This is the basic structure of an eye. On the outermost layer, you'll see the pupil and the iris. This is where light first enters the eye. And the muscles behind the iris squeeze and stretch the lens to direct the light onto the back of the eye. This innermost part, aka the back of the eye, is what we call the retina. Over there, we can find photoreceptors called rods, which capture dimmer lighting, and other ones called cones, which perceive bright light. For animals that have to see well in the dark as a matter of survival, the photoreceptors absorb every bit of photon available in an environment. By the way, photons are another name for tiny units of light. If you've ever flashed some light into a cat's eye in the middle of the night, you've probably seen this mirror-like adaptation in action. It bounces back all the light it receives to the photoreceptor, giving it a second chance to absorb everything it possibly can. It's what makes feline or owl eyes look so yellow in the dark, and may give the feeling that you're inside a horror movie. Now, if we enrolled all animal species of the world in a competition to see who had the best eyesight, which species do you think would win? Well, this result is not as straightforward as it may look. It depends on which category we're talking about. If we're thinking about the animal with the sharpest vision, we have to talk about birds of prey. More specifically, the likes of a peregrine falcon. These falcons have a type of binocular vision eight times as sharp as humans do. This means that while they're flying at impressively fast speeds, they can spot with immense precision a rabbit over a mile away. This is possible because birds of prey have around one million cones in their fovea, on the back of their eyes. For comparison, humans have only around 30,000 cones. But if we're talking about which animal can perceive the widest range of color, then things get a bit more complicated. Remember when we talked about cones and rods? They are the ones responsible for perceiving light and sending the signals to our brains that allow us to form images. But our cones and rods only capture certain wavelengths of light. To put it simply, the amount of colors a species can see depends on which types of photoreceptors it has. Our dog buddies have only two types of receptors. 
This means that they mainly see the colors from the blue and yellow spectrum. If you wear anything from the red color spectrum while you're walking your dog, they will probably perceive it as a gray or something like that. Amazingly, this blue bottle butterfly has at least 15 types of photoreceptors. Seven of them are wired to different tonalities of blues and greens, which means that they can see colors humans can only ever dream of seeing. Researchers believe that since these butterflies live in dense, lush green forests, this adaptation might help them track other of their species during high-speed chases. If we change environments and take a look at aquatic animals, mantis shrimps probably have a pretty psychedelic vision. These funny-looking creatures have a whopping 16 varieties of photoreceptors, with five of them reserved for the ultraviolet, or UV, spectrum. Ultraviolet rays are really short wavelengths, which are invisible to humans. The thing science still doesn't understand is how exactly these mantis shrimps view the world around them. Sure, they can perceive a bunch of colors, but they can't necessarily distinguish all of these colors amongst themselves. This happens because image processing is done in the brain. After the light hits the retina, the retina sends information down our nervous system and a colored image starts being formed in our brains. One might wonder though, what goes on inside these mantis shrimp's brains, huh? And what about motion? The winners in this category are insects. You've probably seen a movie scene where an insect's eyesight looks like a kaleidoscope of thousands of tiny TV screens, but that's not really true. These multiple lenses serve as photoreceptors to capture all available light. You see, to have the fastest motion vision, photoreceptors need to quickly sense changes in light. So let's take a fly as an example. Although they're short-sighted, their eyes give them an almost 360-degree view of their surroundings. That would be a pretty neat superhuman power to have, huh? Their brain processes motion information pretty quickly, 10 times faster than humans do, which is why it's so hard to catch them. Some species have terrible eyesight and have to depend on other mechanisms to see the world around them. For example, Dolphins use their ears to see under the water. I know that sounds weird, but they use something called echolocation. Dolphins emit extremely high-frequency sound waves that are classified as ultrasound, which humans can't hear. While they're swimming, they emit a type of clicking sound to scan the water for food and other animals. Whichever way sound bounces back to them will help them identify what's in the water ahead and move around them. That's also what bats do to help them move around the really dark environments they usually live in. Snakes have pretty bad eyesight. It's believed that some can't see color at all. Snakes that spend most of their time under the ground have small, simple eyes that can only tell the difference between light and dark. Snakes that live above ground have better eyesight. They can see ultraviolet light, which helps them hunt in broad daylight. Now, the most interesting ones are snakes such as pythons and vipers. They have a special something called pit organs on their heads. Pit organs are an important adaptation that allows snakes to see heat sources. Actually, they can detect infrared radiation from a body source, which helps them to detect their prey. If I were a rodent living in the forest, I'd be pretty scared of these guys, 